my background is like a lot of kids. Born to a single mother, father had many kids. Um, found out that you know academics was going to help me get scholarships and things at the college. Went to college for engineering. Yeah, you know, did the normal stuff, mm -hmm. but I hated it. I quit my job in engineering. Decided to start waiting tables at Papado, mm. and from there I fell backwards into a career in corporate sales. And if you've been around long enough, you remember with the telecom industry, the boom and the bust. Right. Well, I, I, I cut my teeth in that environment. Uh, lots of competition, lots of money, uh, lots of exposure, but it all went away. Uh, when that industry fell away, I found myself in advertising and marketing, selling it. So I cut from corporate sales. Okay. Uh, and the last little bit, I realized that I'm becoming older. I can make it up. But, you know, these companies fall apart, such and so forth. Decided to start my own boutique advertising agency. Um, that worked moderately successful, but, but how I really got into this business was from the PR side of that boutique agency. One of our clients was about to leave and take about 40% of our company's revenue, which is going to hurt. Oh, wow. Hurt bad. Because, and she was sitting there saying, you know, hey, I, I'm going to be put before the governor for an emergency appointment to a judge. Um, but here's the thing. I don't know how to dress for that. And I'm sitting there thinking about all the money we're about to lose because she's going away. She's like, but you always dress so nice. Is that something you can help me with? Because I was doing her PR. I'm like, well, yes. Um, and I went shopping with her to help her get ready for this thing. And I went and looked up. I was like, what is it that when people help people get dressed for such and so forth? It's an image consultant. Uh -huh. That's how I found myself being interested in image consulting. But it kind of goes in what I've done in my life. I've always uh, had a sense of style, a sense of flair. Uh, so I got into the business helping men and women. Uh, and what really brought me here is when I started focusing on my guy clients, they were coming in saying, hey, look, man, I came into you to get a better outcome personally or professionally. But on the personal side, man, I'm looking good. I'm smelling good. I'm, I'm, I'm moving up the corporate ladder. I'm, I'm moving up. My business is expanding. Now I want to have a wife, a kid, a family, whatever. And I'm not finding any women out here who are kind of at my level or my new level. And then I'm hearing women say they can't find men over here. So what I'm really having is a conversation that my guys have and my women have. And I spent the first three years talking to men, but that didn't really catch on. But when I started talking to women about the kind of men they say they want, I asked one question. What do those men want from women? Uh -huh. And that's what really kind of kicked this whole thing off. And, you know, the pandemic helped a lot, too, because everybody's sitting at home. Right. So that's the conversation that's been happening since the summer. But honestly, man, I've been involved in relationship conversations since 1989, Shahar Ali College Campus. I've always been in the mix with, with relationships, but that's what's taken off here. So, And that's what kind of led to, to um, this new burst of popularity, just having the same conversation that we have on the basketball court, the barbershop, golf course. And I'm telling women what men really wish they could say, but they can't say this stuff in the corporate environment. I've been there. Right. You'll get canceled. You'll get me too. You'll get hostile work environment. Uh -huh. um, and so many women are not understanding what the disconnect is. So what I'm saying is I'm like, well, the kind of men you want are these guys. And this is what they want from women. And are you willing to do that? Or if not, at least now you know why the disconnect is. So that's, that's about as simple as I can put it. So. Interesting. Yeah, because that's one thing that I ended up saying to uh, one of my employees over there. I was like, you know, I like Kevin Samuels because he just gets crispy every day. I don't really <laughs> feel like I have that much of an incentive to present myself in that way. But, you know, certainly for you to, to garner the respect of these random people who are calling in and stuff, it, it very much helps to uh, accentuate your brand. And mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about that like you've always sort of had a bit of yeah. uh, understanding of, of sort of dressing for what you want to accomplish, right? Well, coming from corporate sales, you know, the first thing they buy is you. Mm. So when you come through the door and I'm talking about a multi-million dollar deal or even several thousands of dollars, um, your image does play a part in it. And I spent a lot of time, money and investment in getting coaching. Uh, I do. I did the same things that I tell people to do, because there's a difference between let's just say insurance. Somebody works at a local state farm, farmers or all state. There's going to be somebody up here that's making 500, 300,000 and somebody making 30 or 50. Mm. They're selling the same products to the same market. What's the difference? Network and appearance. Mm. So I've always known that your image can help get you in the door. What you do once you're in the door is the difference. Mm. So 
Uh, that's why I, I stress the, uh, the points of image. And before I get too deep, image is four parts. Appearance, behavior, communication, digital footprint, A, B, C, D. The appearance part just gets you a heard, but how you behave, how you communicate, and then how you look online really kind of solidifies all that stuff. And that all comes uh, into fruition on the show because there are people who come in like, I don't like this guy, I don't like nothing he has to say, what does he talk about? But then when they sit down and if they actually listen to me, it makes more sense more often than not. So. Right. Uh, yeah, I have definitely had more than a few people that I know try to, like, take issue with you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we keep having conversations. The more and more stuff that we watch that I'm like, listen, I can understand how you could say that Kevin is disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I can understand how you maybe think that he's uh, prioritizing things. He's prioritizing materialism or, or money or youth, et cetera. I can understand how you might take issue with some of those things. But I can't say that I've ever heard him give bad advice. I can't. There's never been a time where I've been watching you speak to a woman and thought he's giving her horrible advice. He's completely misleading her. You might be a little rough with That's your delivery at times, but it seems like you really are kind of giving people advice that they need, to be honest. Well, and what's happened uh, as of late, I have a private Facebook group that I talk about. Mm. And in this group, it's been up less than six months, and I pretty much handpicked the people that come in. Men over here, women over here. And in eight months, and going on about seven months, there have been eight couples that have gotten together mm. and three engagements. So even on YouTube, a young lady just posted a video last week. Kevin Samuels' advice is the reason I got engaged. And they got, she got engaged uh, in Aruba. So it's hard for people, it's becoming harder and harder for people to say, your tone, your this, your that, when you're producing results. And mm. what I often say is, I'm like, well, Simon Cowell on American Idol was allowed to become a multimillionaire. Mm. And he is the reason the show was as successful as it was. And we wouldn't be talking about him if he wasn't abrasive with right. his commentary. Bars. Howard Stern was the pioneer of the shock jock kind of thing. And even to a lesser degree, Gordon Ramsay. And I ask people, is it my tone or is it the fact that I'm right? Mm. And yet my tone just gives you a reason to not like it. Because two plus two is four no matter who's saying it. Mm. And we need more of that in today where you can be a man and you can build all this and have, be successful for you, your family. And somebody can go back and say, hey, man, something you did when you were a uh, freshman in college really made me feel uncomfortable. Give me half your shit. Mm. No, thank you. Right. <laughs> no, thank you. The world has certainly changed a lot in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. So bring a little bit more of that back and not just. And here's the thing. It's not just harsh or direct for mean sake. I reflect what I get from people. Mm. So people who watch my show recognize that I just mirror back. And there are times when I'm sitting there talking to somebody who may come in as a real advocate. Next thing you know, she's in tears going back to her husband. Mm. Um, but people like to focus on the things that make their argument stick. And really, it's about staying comfortable. Mm. But I'm like, cool, be comfortable. But just be comfortable with your outcomes. Don't complain about them. Right. You're making a C. I'm good with C's, but don't want A outcomes. Right. Because you have, we should have equality of opportunity, but not equality of outcomes. Mm. Okay, guys, we want to thank you so, so much for getting us to 100,000 subscribers right here on the Clips channel. If you want to support, please click that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 200K. Thank you. Thank you so much.